All right, everybody, good morning. Thank you uh, all for being here um, for this very, very special announcement. Uh, we have four speakers for you uh, today. We'll begin with the Aurora Police Chief, Chief Nick Metz. Uh, then we'll have Denver Police Chief Paul Pazin, followed by U.S. Attorney uh, for the District of Colorado, Mr. Jason Dunn, and the Acting Assistant Special Agent in charge, Mr. Jeff Russell. So if you could please hold your questions until all of the presenters have presented. So at this point, I'd like to uh, invite up Chief Metz. Great. Thank you. Good morning, and uh, again, first of all, thank you for taking the time to be here this morning. Uh, this is a very important topic to us. Um, two nights ago, uh, four people in Aurora were shot. Fortunately, all survived. It's another sad reminder of the number of high-profile youth-related uh, shootings that we are seeing throughout our metro region. And I was watching the news last night and one of the reporters had actually comment, commented that uh, something to the effect of our society seems to be getting numb to the news of this kind of violence going on in our region, particularly as it pertains to youth. And I want to take the opportunity today to tell you that that may be the case, but law enforcement in our metro region is not numb to this. Human toll, human lives have been shattered, human uh, families have been shattered, uh, and so the, the, the impact that is, this is having in our region is staggering. And so we want to make sure as law enforcement partners throughout this region that we are taking extra steps uh, to do that, to take care of this. We're very fortunate in the metro region that our law enforcement partners work very well together. Our local and federal partners uh, strategize together and work well and communicate well together. And you don't see that in all parts of the country. We have a number of task forces here in our area. We have task forces that work on bank robberies, uh, human trafficking, um, internet crimes against children, those kinds of things. And now we have a task force that is going to be dedicated to combating violence, particularly gun violence, in our communities. For years, we've had the MGTF, otherwise known as uh, the Metro Gang Task Force. Uh, that, that task force was primarily uh, dedicated towards uh, eradicating gang violence. We want to take this one step further, and so we've basically put MGTF aside, uh, and we've created a new, a new uh, initiative in which we are calling RAVEN, and RAVEN stands for Regional Anti-Violence Enforcement Network. It's not only going to work on gang violence, but, but primarily it's going to be, it's going to focus on gun violence uh, in our region. The difference primarily, well, let me back up here. Primarily, we're going to continue to do the things like the boots on the ground, the investigations, all the things that, that MGTF uh, used to do, but with one added component. And that ad added component is going to be the use of science and the use of our crime labs, whether it's the Denver Crime Lab or the new un uh, unified metro, metro crime lab uh, located in Centennial through our ATF partners in the Crime Gun Intelligence Center. So Raven will be taking a multi-agency approach and in partnership with the U.S. Attorney's Office, in partnership with ATF, HSI, and many other uh, local and other federal partners, we are coming together to, re to do our best to combat and, and re significantly reduce um, uh, gun violence in our communities. You remember when I started off, I said we had uh, four people shot in Aurora two nights ago. Uh, that, again, was a very staggering event for us and one that we put all our resources toward. Uh, when we got the call about this shooting, one of the things that we did immediately was we contacted Raven and we told Raven we needed them to take part in this investigation. And so Raven made a, played a significant role in cooperation with our major crimes unit, our SWAT, our FAST teams, um, and we were able to arrest a suspect uh, this morning who was involved in that, in that shooting. Uh, there was some great work done, and again, this is just one example of many, and then you'll hear about some later, uh, the great work that Raven has done. Right now, I'd like to introduce Chief Paul Pazin of the Denver Police Department, and he's going to explain in a little bit more detail what Raven is. Chief. Thank you. So, good morning, all. Thank you very much for uh, being here. We're very excited uh, about this. This is the uh, first of its kind anywhere uh, in the country. It's uh, bringing together innovation and collaboration so we can more effectively address 
gun violence. Uh, gun violence doesn't stay in Denver or Aurora. It impacts the entire metro region. And for us to maximize our effectiveness, we have to work together in order to uh, address this. And as you heard, innovation, technology, CJIC. Uh, the metro region has been a national leader with uh, the CJIC model, and we're now taking that next step, enhancing uh, what has already been a great program and making that better. Uh, what it means by better is getting that technology side of things, uh, linking those guns together, but more importantly, finding out that human intelligence side, who the shooters are. Our goal with this is to get shooters, people that are creating harm to our metro area, off the street in hours and days, not weeks and months. And by working together collaboratively, holding people accountable, whether that's through the Denver District Attorney's Office, Arapaho, Adams, Douglas, or the U.S. Attorney's Office, that's how we are going to make the metro area much safer by working together. Uh, I now have the great pleasure of introducing our U.S. Attorney, Jason Dunn. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, I've been the U.S. Attorney for about eight months now, and when I came in, one of the things I realized immediately was that we're really fortunate in Colorado and, and somewhat unique across the country because we have truly great um, partnerships and collaboration among state and federal agencies and local agencies uh, here in the District of Colorado. Uh, and so that makes my job a lot easier um, and it makes it easier for, I think, <clears throat> all of us to make Colorado a safer place. Um, and so when I came in, I talked to my staff and I said, um, look, we're gonna prioritize whatever we can do to have the biggest impact we can on public safety. And so when we were asked to be part of this effort, I full-heartedly said, absolutely, we're gonna do that, we're gonna dedicate resources to it um, because we think this is a great effort, this is smart enforcement, and it's a way to have a significant impact on public safety. Um, as the chief said, um, primarily um, these cases will likely be bought, brought um, at the um, local level by the district attorney's office, but we're here to be a partner in that and offer um, federal law where it is um, most appropriate and where it can have the biggest impact. A couple ways we can do that. We have, at the federal level, we have felon in possession charges. So if you have someone who uh, has committed a, fire, a prior felony um, and then is in possession with a firearm, we have mandatory minimum sentences at the federal level we can use as a, as a tool to get those um, particularly dangerous people off the street. Um, we also have um, statutory charges we can bring when someone uses uh, a gun um, in an act of violence or uh, in connection with um, uh, drug trafficking um, where we can get mandatory minimum sentences. Um, we have RICO charges and um, VICAR, which is um, uh, uh, acts of violence in, in relation to organized crime. Um, and then also at the federal level, we have um, what are statutory presumptions about detention. So when someone is arrested and is in this pending federal proceedings, um, whereas at the state level they might be more easily uh, able to bond out, particularly in rural parts of the state, um, but also here in the metro area, um, we can, um, there's, a, there's a federal presumption of detention. Um, and so we can get dangerous people off the street pending um, federal proceedings. So where appropriate, we're going to work closely with our, our local partners and um, help implement um, RAVEN, and I think it, you'll see a significant impact on public safety, so we're happy to be part of it. Thank you. So I'll turn it over to now um, the special agent in charge, Dave Booth, uh, with Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Thank you. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of a, a type of case that RAVEN works uh, and has worked. The, it's depicted over here on the timeline as well as the, the chart, the map. Back in April 2017 through March of 2018, there were a series of 13 seemingly not connected shootings. These shootings involved aggravated robberies, aggravated burglaries, armed burglaries, and multiple homicides. But these, these cases were all tied together by Raven by the use of forensic technology, NIBIN, and other advanced investigative techniques. Ultimately, all these shootings were tied to, to one criminal street gang. The investigation led to the arrest of 19 defendants. Currently, 15 of those defendants have pled guilty. 
to their charges for a total of 115 years combined. They not only were they charged individually, they were charged with the Colorado Organized Crime Control Act, which enhanced their sentences. This case is, again, it's a great example of the collaboration and the regional uh, connection that we have here with Raven. At this point, I'd like to ask if um, anyone has any questions for any of the speakers. I, I was just wondering if this, I thought this was a new network, but I see references to, to the work you've already done. Can you explain that? Correct. So you heard CJIC mentioned before, it stands for Crime Gun Intelligence Center. This, ex this has been existing for several years here in the metro area. Raven has just has expanded upon that, and we've taken in more partners, and we're just we're trying to put the message out that it's it's not just Denver, it's not just Aurora or Lakewood, it's everyone in the and the surrounding counties. 